Is nobody asked? Is nobody asked? <laughs> Shout out Michelle Bridges. I have a um, what? Shout out Michelle Bridges. Girl, can we talk about Biggest Loser? Absolutely. I think we should. Biggest Loser episode. Uh, we got to stop theming episodes. This is the fatty episode. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can say that, guys. I can say that. I promise. I promise. I promise. Why can you say that? Um, I, I almost started the episode on the darkest. Like we would have had to trigger warning the episode. <laughs> Oh, I, I was think anorexic I, I think in I, high school. Oh, that's right. But that's the opposite. <laughs> well, I've also, I've lived my life, um, like in the last, mm, what, six years, I've lived on either side of 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 40 kilos of difference. How crazy is that? You are the Joaquin Phoenix, but with, with, without getting cast in anything. Just because you can make it a clip. Yeah, Just, well, uh, well, you know how like there's uh, there's those. Was Taylor, it worth saying it? Yeah, it was. You know those uh, Swifty fans who will live their life and like travel from concert to concert to see Taylor. Yes, I know one. You do that with Joaquin Phoenix, but it's just being like, how much does he weigh right now? Yeah, that's your. Concert. I just weigh what he weighs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you hoping he like his next movie is like a, a sequel to Super Size Me, so you can have some Maccas? <laughs> I'm going the whale too. Please, the whale too. please, the whale too. <laughs> I'm really hungry. Yeah. The biggest loser I used to, oh, my family used to watch that a lot. Me too. Like yeah, my sisters loved and it. stuff. Loved it when I was a kid. Cause I, I think because actually, I don't know why I liked it. I just remember being like, whatever the show was trying to convince me of, I was convinced. There was one bit in it and I can't find it anywhere on the internet, but there was like, oh my God, my family used to love it so much. <laughs> not because it was like, not because of what they called him, but it was just funny that he said it. Like it was one of those bits where they're like, you know when they're they're exercising with them and they're like, what do they tell you? Like, why are you doing this? Do it for you. And then, uh, you know, they go get into their insecurities and they're like mm-hmm. punching the punching bag and saying things that hurt them. And there's this one guy and they're oh, like, yeah. what did they do? They're like they call he call they call me names. <laughs> they call you Fatty Boomba. <laughs> <laughs> like that's objectively funny. The, even every, even like post, you know, every woke, insult, body for... neutrality, positivity, whatever. Yeah, I don't I don't subscribe to that. I'll call him fat. <laughs> But no, every like insult for an overweight person are all very childish, funny names. Well, yes. Fatty Boomba, you could never drop that in like a in a rap battle. You could It'd never be, be like, hilarious. That's some that's some three sixty curse. Type, it's like you need to drop. You need to lose some weight. Why don't you do some Zumba? Because you're looking to me like a fatty Boomba. Yeah. Did I just guys? Did I just discover I can freestyle on the pod? Did I just discover that right now? God. <laughs> right now. Right now. Right now. Uh, but that I love the temptation segments where they just put cake in front of them. I love like that like mid 2000s TV era of I've been thinking about uh, like America's Next Top Model recently, like mm-hmm. re- watching old clips from it that are circulating on TikTok and stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> Tyra's like um it's <laughs> Tyra's like Look at your stomach in this. <laughs> this is like the skinniest woman I've ever seen. And she's like, I'm sorry, like I've my metabolism's been all over the place. I'm not sleeping as much. And she's like, you know what I do when I'm on set? Like, I'm not eating that day. Like it's just like and everyone's in the room, like, yeah. The crazy thing yeah. is, on the surface level, everyone will go, Well, you can't say that. You you have to, you know. You, sh- you should be doing this. You should you do whatever you want that makes you feel comfortable. But if you're a model and you probably get to the day of the shoot, you're probably not going to eat. You're probably going to, th- like, I think a lot of people, in in theory, things are really good. You're like, yep, you know, you take care of yourself, do this, do this, do that. Like, dude, when I do stand-up, everyone's like, you know, loosen up, talk to people. Dude, I'm a fucking, per- like, you don't want to be around me. I'm not yeah. talking to anyone. I'm taking three, four shits in the ten minutes before. Oh, it. yeah, in the green room too, I'm, in that fucking like, green room bathroom dude, upstairs. I'm not eating. Hey, I'm not drinking anything. I think whenever people are in, like, a high-pressure situation, it's all good and well to be like, you do whatever you need to do. But when it comes down to it, everyone's going to be like, I'm going to be so unhealthy for the next 24 hours because I just need to get the job done. Absolutely. Like yeah. I, everyone's like, what's your pre-show ritual? I'm like, oh, I'm writing Don't. down 10 things I hate about myself. Good. <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> like writing down why I'm a failure and this needs to go well. Otherwise I'm going to yeah. drive away and never come back. Duh. It brings the worst out of you. I swear. It's, um yeah, I, I've been thinking about like, it's it's just insane. Like, like it's we're still like that though. Everyone's like, you know, when you've lost. Wait, I remember because I had tonsillitis recently. You know this? 
Um, yes, I do. And the first time I get really, really, really bad tonsillitis. Like my airways almost close up. Do you still have tonsils? Uh, yeah, and I don't. Ick. But- Ick. <laughs> it's an ick that I have Ick. tonsils? Yep. Ick. Why? It's too much of you. Get rid of it. I can't schedule. Get rid of it. I can't schedule eating jelly for two weeks. Uh, Famously, why is it always jelly? Add them to the list. Enemies of the pod. People with tonsils. I thought you were going to say tonsils. (laughs) Enemies of the pod. Tonsils. No tonsil gang. We out here. I'm a tonsil eunuch. You see how much? You see how much (laughs) space we got in this throat right now? Yeah, tonsils. you can't be a throat goat. Yeah, we're not with gonna. Tonsils. You can't be a throat goat with tonsils, guys. You can't. There's the title of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, when when you come to the live shows, we don't check your IDs. We go say ah, check your tonsils. <laughs> we're getting out the tongue suppressor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's got a she got a girthy set of tonsils on her. Wow. Well, that's what my so I couldn't. Yeah. Anyway, um, I couldn't eat anything for like days and days and days. Um. And it reminded me of last time this happened to me, kind of like the first time it happened to me. I was, uh, I sort of saw my mum's friends afterwards and they were like, you lost so much weight. What, like what, what's happened? But I was like, I had tonsillitis. Yeah. Janine, you I fucking mean, asshole. That was me after when I got back from Bali. I lost like four kilos because of dengue fever. Yeah. Which was great because I'd been bulking and I was meaning to cut. Mm. And I, I got down and I was like, oh, I don't have to do any work. Mm. And then I've been really good. I've been eating muscle chef meals. I've been great maintaining the weight I want to be at. Last three nights I've just just ordered KFC on Uber Eats and I'm just fat again. <laughs> it's very annoying. It's, cool. it's amazing how much work you put in for it to do very little and then you do the opposite and your body's like, oh, you want to go that way? Yeah, we can, get, we can fast track you to that way. This is what I hate about exercising. I'm like, I did it. What do you mean <laughs> I like, have to do it again? I'd like a treat now. You know, it's, Literally. Why isn't exercise a one-time thing? Like I'm saying, it's I so did a, dumb. I did a sit-up. Where are my abs? Like where? Like, sorry, I did it. What do you mean every day? What do you mean? And if I do something bad the next day, does the, does the sit-up doesn't matter. Yes, it does. I've got stuff on tomorrow. I, it's great. Like, Busy. I have, Busy, flat out, sorry. I have looked like so many different things in my life that I've completely lost track of what having an appearance is. Like, what? No, I'm serious. No, I'm serious. What are like, you, Buddhist? Have you lost a sense of self? I wish. There is no me. I have too much. I have too much. I wish I was Buddhist. I used to say I didn't like Buddhism because, like, purely because I knew I could never do it. Yeah, because you could never do the fucking oath of silence, whatever it is. Well, I did when I had tonsillitis. God, I'm like. It was bad. It was I bad. I knew it was bad because when I said, do you want to do the pod? You're like, I can't talk. And I'm like, she will do anything to make sure she can talk. I know. Talking talking's all I have in this world. Yapping. You can't, you can't take yappa. that away from me. Yeah, I'm a full-time yappa, yappa. Yappa, yappa, I'm a full-time yappa. It's crazy. Like you can't – like talking's my favorite thing in the world. It's all I have. It's all I'm good at. It's, the only reason I do this is – this is great. Uh, I need this podcast to work because they're like, what skills do you have? I'm like, shut up. I don't shut up. How's that? Yeah. I don't Speak, know if that's a skill. Do you know what's crazy? It's an affliction. There, there's a, uh, a thought that came across my desk this weekend. Um, I was watching a movie and there was someone who was – no, I was watching Modern Family and there was something that happened in the episode where some there was a blackout and one of the characters was going to check the you know the generator before they were checking on something to do with the family mm. and someone goes, oh, do you love electricity more than you love me? And I know it was a throwaway joke but in my mind I'm like, I might, I think I love electricity more than I love a lot of people in my life. Electricity? Yeah, but you don't really – oh, you, if, you're, if I had the choice between electricity and a lot of people in my life – Catch me playing Xbox with all the lights on. Oh, you you would give you would give up electricity for so, like people in your friend group. You think you wouldn't go? I'll never see that person again, but I still get Wi-Fi. When is this on the table? Right this now. This is not a this is not a choice you ever have to make. It's a hypothetical fuckhead. Right, but okay. But think about it. You're 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 putting up a wall. Before we even build the house, you're, you're not you're not allowing you're not letting your kids come to the park. You're, you're looking over the fence at the park and going, "There's too many pedos in there." Not bringing my. You don't even realize those aren't pedos. Those are social workers who are going to play with your kids. This is a strange analogy. You got to hear me out. Electricity. I if you were, if someone says, "Hey, you either is get electricity, else fucking here? you either <laughs> get electricity for the." This, I'm so right though. If you have electricity for the rest of your life, or like. A good friend that you see at house parties. Which are you giving up first? Who? Do- I guess 
the uh, the friend exactly. So therefore, you love electricity more than that. I thought about it. What I think I love Thomas el- Edison looking ass. I was like, I think I love electricity more than certain cousins I have. I have a friend that ate a light bulb. Okay, here we go. Perfect pivot. Let's go. I do. She's awesome. Not like a like a circus thing. They just ate it. <laughs> She's not like a sword, a light bulb swallower. That's what um, David Blaine did. He like ate shards of glass. Yeah. Is your, are you friends with David Blaine? Yeah. Awesome. David. Oh, we call um, David. No, no, no. Shut up, idiot. No, no. My friend Izzy. Yeah, she ate a light bulb. She, she, the first day I met her, we turned up to uni. It was one of those like icebreaker circles things, which is crazy. <laughs> Icebreaker, more like glass breaker. Watch this. Yeah, it was crazy. Like we, it was it was crazy because it's also like we're in a musical theater degree. By the end of that degree, we've seen everyone's insides and out literally. Okay, um, you've seen all the tonsils. So it was like everyone say yeah, oh yeah. Oh, Every, yeah. Everyone say a fact about themselves. I'm like, I'm gonna finger these people within a week. Like, you know what I mean? It's like musical theater school, like on stage. You know what I mean? Um, and so my friend was like, um, my name's Izzy. When I was little, I ate a light bulb, and the other day I got stabbed, and we were like. Huh? And it was it's true. She got on the I, way home I from Vivid, she got stabbed like like eight different times. She showed us. It was crazy. I love the way she phrased that as if the two situations are connected somehow. But it does feel connected. I was at somebody's house and I ate their favorite light bulb. And so they, they held a me. grudge and they stabbed me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what do you mean she got stabbed at Vivid? On the way home from Vivid. What a joyous place. I know. You what just- a jo- I'm seeing all those lights. Yeah, just. Oh, you wouldn't even see it coming with the strobes. You'd be like, I think I got stabbed once. Like, no, you got the second one in on me when it was when it was dark. It's insane. It's you, insane. You're looking up at the the drone show, and suddenly you're bleeding out on the opera steps, on the Sydney opera steps. Truly, you're bleeding out. Truly, truly. Um, I guess though, did she see the light? <sighs> No. I fuck yourself. That was great. It was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know why? Because we're hope good. Because we're because we're real friends now. Good buddies. Good buddies. Because we're good friends now. Yeah, I we signed the contract. M- maybe back in the day, I would have gone. Ah, ha, ha, ha. We've never signed any contract. You know how like um, a lot of celebrities do uh, publicity stunts where they date someone. Our friendship is a publicity stunt. It does feel that way. It's to get me over with the LGs and the Bs and the Gs. <laughs> It's so, it's so I can meet. Um, this is so you can. It's so I can meet every marketing person from every sports team ever. It's so you can walk through Bondi without being catcalled. Like I don't know, that's Eden. That's one of the, it's one of the goodies. <laughs> oh goodness, goodness gracious! Mm. I want to, I want to pivot it back to. We almost got onto top, like onto a topic, and then you um, bulldozed it, which is something both of us love to do. That's a firstly yappers, secondly interrupters. Our two favorite. That's our sports. Who's a bigger yapper? It, it comes and goes. You know one of us will go nonverbal, like me in the car, mm-hmm. like, and you'll just go. Both of us can just go if given the chance. So you're saying we're equal in the yapping department? I would say because sometimes one of us goes like beep and like just stops. Who interrupts more? Um, I would uh, – let's leave it to these guys. We'll, we'll post it as a story. Who interrupts more? Okay. Okay. Be- because there's, you know what? There's a lot of me going like, wait, wait, no, 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 no. But there is also a lot of me interjecting into what you're saying. I don't know. I, I'm genuinely you curious. You sound like a, a president being like, uh, just before we vote, uh, what I'm doing isn't technically illegal. What I'm doing is for the country. It's for you guys. This podcast does read like a presidential election. Yeah, like the recent ones, it does. Yeah. <laughs> This is the president presidential it's election. Malarkey. <laughs> because <laughs> it's a bunch yeah. of malarkey. You are red state presenting and I'm nonverbal. That's <laughs> that, <laughs> That's Trump and Biden right there. Yeah, it's not bad. That's it's really us. Um Red State presenting is a wow. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> and not I, proudly. And I have, I am dementia coded. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to say, please, please, please. Um, I, I, I wanted to talk about looking like different things. Why I say that is because in my life, in my adult life, since I was like mm, 16, I have looked like every, I reckon like, not okay, not everything, but I've looked so crazy. I've had every appearance, if that makes sense, within like, you know, uh, normal realms. You know, I've always been able-bodied. I've always been somewhat, somewhat like straight-sized if it Fucking makes get on with it. Sense. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay, sorry. My followers don't want to hear that shit. I know, but I'm scared of mine. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want them to be like, oh my God. actually, I'm, I, you know I love you, whatever. My followers will fight your followers. I know. <laughs> okay, but what I mean is like I've been um, Tim Burton character. Yeah. Like yep. I've been Demogorgon. Yes. I've been very Alien versus Predator. Yes. I Pixar. 
very. Oh, I have. You know what? I have been Pixar. Yeah. There was a time for that. I was a little slim, thick with it. Um, I've also been jacked. Like I had like. I was like ripped. Like abs was like. <laughs> you had abs. Oh yeah. Well, I was like a competitive dancer. I need to see a picture of you with abs. I I, I will. I will show you. Okay, we'll, we'll put it up on the. I can't. My phone. Can is we filming. put that up on the Instagram? No context. No caption. Oh yeah. Just a photo of you with abs. Oh yeah. No, like, no context. I was like so strong and like ripped, and then like I've like been on the bigger side. I've looked like everything. So now when people are like, you know. I have no idea what I look like, if that makes sense. Like I'm like, oh, like well, describe you. And if when it gets to my body, I'm like, I don't know, because it's something different. I'm a different font every fucking year. And so I never like – that's why I go like I look like hoodie. I look like a hoodie in my mind, if that makes sense. Okay. Because I'm like I can't keep up, yeah, so I, I go I, hoodie. I, I look I like hoodie. I associate, I associate like tracksuit pants with you currently. Yeah, exactly. A lot of jumpers, a lot of – Yeah. Hoodies. Well, I do that because I'm like, I can't actually, I don't have time for whatever the fuck is happening here anymore. I don't want to, I, I, <laughs> I've always said, sometimes I get annoyed about having an appearance at all. And I go, I just wish I was a brain in a jar. Mm. Oh yeah. You have said that. Yeah. I just want it. Okay. Okay. I don't want an appearance at all. Do you think people would be more inclined to talk to you or less inclined if you were a brain in a jar? Um, I think, you know, it's a good icebreaker. You know, people, you know, how some people so wear funky thing? earrings as a conversation piece. Yeah. I'm a brain in a jar. What was it when you were at a third of school? Third of what school. was a theater? Uh, what was your icebreaker? What did you say? Um, did you say I'm going to finger all of you by next week? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, no. You implied it. I think I said I probably say something really normal because I know the way I am is already going to like people are already knowing like there's something happening here. Yeah. So, you know, you got to like say something pretty I said I think I said I'm a snowboard instructor. I think it's uh, yeah because it's like a surprising. It thing. It is a surprising thing. It's like you don't have to know me to be like oh random cool yeah. like it's just like a it's something that I forget about myself all the time because I'm like oh yeah I forget this like the whole like oh comedian blah blah theater dance whatever and it's like oh yeah I also snowboard as hell. She, she shreds. <laughs> I fucking miss it so you seen, much. You seen this chick shred plow pal? Can we go to the snow sometime in our like friendship? Yep. Because you go all the time. I went. Yep. Like last year. I'm going in. September. You go to New Zealand, yeah. New Zealand. I've never, I've never skied New Zealand. And then I'll be in America. How does it, um, how does it compare to Australia? American snow? No, God, I know. Um, uh, New Zealand. Haven't been yet. Okay. That's cool. why I said I'm going in September. Cool. That's why, I, that's why I used future tense. Okay. Well, the thought was loading in my head. How, um, where have you, where have you skied in? You were in uh, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. Aspen's supposed to be. Went to Aspen, didn't ski there uh, because the, the oh, we were only there for a couple of days for the X Games and the ski passes there are like – like that's where the Kardashians are going to ski. Oh, I know. It's so, so expensive. It's ridiculous. But I was in Breckenridge, which was oh, yeah. fucking amazing because we were there for like four weeks. During the week, it's like Disneyland when no one's there. You exactly. have these slopes to yourself. Like I was like, oh, shit, is this like a, not a good slope? She's like, no, just everyone comes on the weekend. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love – that's why I love going to like small towns and stuff and like smaller resorts because it's just – I don't want to stop. You know, I don't want to I don't want to line up. It's going to piss me off. You'd literally ski down and you'd come straight back onto straight the Straight back on. Lift. It's perfect. perfect. Yeah, here Breckenridge is really good. I haven't it's been, great. I haven't been anywhere else except for the small town that I like lived in for a while in Canada um, because of the fact that – and I'm, I love my stepdad so much and obviously, obviously I'm grateful Dude. that he spoiled me like this. He's the best ever. But – um. Everyone is like, oh, Fernie, like that's the best place in the world. Oh, okay. That's the best snow I've ever seen. And I'm like, Al, why would you do that? He took That was my first place I'd ever seen snow. So it only gets worse from there. I'm like, you just made the rest of my life snowboarding experience kind of a letdown because everywhere I go, I'm like, eh. No, I get, it's, that's like if, if a woman loses her virginity to me, everything after that is going to be just downgrade, downgrade, down, downgrade. Yeah, all right. Have you been to Japan? Um, no, it's real good. Okay, it's um, it's like w w I don't know. Even at least when I was there, like everyone's like, "Oh, the powder." I'm like, "It's like heavier. It's like wetter than I think, like you know, America or Canada." But it's fucking awesome because they just like get wasted. It's the, like the, the, the culture, the Japanese. Yeah, the Japanese, the Japanese, the Japanese. Yeah, um, the, it's the like more in the, the culture Japanese. to be like, let's let's have shots of sake and 
go on the hill. Wow. So they're crazy. I mean, the US, awesome. the US are like, they got fucking hall monitors out on the slopes being like, now we're going too fast. They didn't have them in Breck. No one really got, no one really got pulled <laughs> you get up on. speeding fans? Speeding fans? You know, I've seen all the videos of like, uh, like patrol mm. stopping people if they're doing tricks or going too yeah. fast and they'll like take your, it's, My re- God. it's very hall monitor. It's very like, show me your pass. It's like, fuck off. Running in the I'm, hallway. Like if you're legitimately doing so, but so many of them are just for nothing. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, no, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, no, I didn't have any in But it's, all, it's more like a if there's kids around and like yeah. idiots are like. Hoonin. You know, and like dropping in from like side trails and stuff. Yes. And like not like looking at who's coming. Because it's exactly like driving a car. Like don't just. Yeah, exactly. Like veer onto a, a main car. road like and not look up yes. to see who's coming. And you, yeah, be aware of what's in front of you. You know, the and person like, I know in front why, of you has to give uh, – you give way to the person in front of you. And I know why snowboarders get a bad rep. Like I've seen them fucking swipe out so many like – Yeah. Oh, skiers. I remember on the oh, – like my last day of skiing. So I didn't really – the only time I'd fallen over was just me. I didn't knock anyone over. Mm-hmm. And then on the last day I watched – like on my, I was like our two last runs down. I watched one girl go over something that she thought she was just going to go over but she like flipped – her skis stuck into the snow and then she like forward flipped mm-hmm. and like ate shit. And then I kept going and another dude just like took out this chick and then he kept yeah. going. I was like, holy shit. And then on my very last run of a, of a month of skiing where I haven't had any incidents, I was going down and I was going down towards where like, you know, you can pack everything up. Yeah. And this lady on a snowboard was coming like sideways across the mountain yeah. And at the time I was like, fuck, was that my fault? But then I realized because she went under the back of my skis, like from, okay. like behind me. And so I was like, oh, did I cut her off? And then I was like, no, but with the way we crossed over, there's no way that I've I had to be in front of her the whole time. Yeah. Because I was already going downwards and all I saw out of the corner of my eye was sideways. But, yeah, she, she was like a 40-year-old mum and she hit the deck and like I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going to leave. So I just had to awkwardly waddle up like 20 metres back up the slope and check on her. I think she hit her head. She, I think she had a concussion. Oh, shit. But she was really surprised that I was there. She was like, no one stops. And I was like, ah. Oh. It is I would crazy. Have felt, I would have felt awful if, if she had just fallen and then something happened to her. Mm. But I just sat with her for like five minutes and then I think her son or something came down. And she, I was like, because uh, I, I was apologizing, but I didn't think I was in the wrong. Like I didn't think I did anything wrong. I was just going straight down and I was looking in front of me and then I felt someone – Right out of the corner of my eye, I come behind me. And I'm like, I've only been going straight. It's exactly like driving a car. Is like it's always the person behind. Like if, if you're going sideways, and this is also where we're all coming to the end of it. If you're coming sideways, I'm like, I think that's your fault. But yeah. also you feel bad. It's like she's run into my skis and my skis are attached to my legs. My legs are extremely muscular and they're <laughs> heavy base to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It's, uh, this is the thing is like skiers having a, a, a fall is cre- like if you see a ski fall, you're like, <gasps> we're like snowboarders are. <laughs> it looks like a toddler. Snowboard, yeah, they're they're going down. It's like sho- someone shoved over a Teletubby. You just got to keep rolling. Like I've fallen down and gotten back up in one motion. Mm. Countless count. It's like so normal to fall on a snowboard. If you're a skier, you're you could be losing everything. You'd be yard sailing. Absolutely, obviously, because it's like two points of like you can stand up on skis. If that makes sense. Mm. Like on a snowboard, you're like you're constantly balancing. If you've got – like you can't just be – unless you're in completely flat ground, but not even – that you can't just be like standing idle. Yes. You're constantly like riding a snowboard. So it's like you're obviously going to have so many more falls because you can't like – if you fall, there's nothing – you can't like move your other leg and catch yourself. Mm-hmm. You're just going to go down. There's so, – oh, fuck, I've had some crazy falls on <laughs> snowboards, especially like I like to go to the rail park alone because I hate falling in front of people get really embarrassed. But, like, that's the only way you get better, obviously. It's the only, only way you can, like, try stuff that you can't. Can you do tricks? Yes. Are you, you're, like, good, good. Um, Like, I'm – anyone who's really, really good, I'm, like, okay. But anyone who's, like, all right thinks I'm good. I do take a while to get back into it. Like, I get spooked a bit. And also Australian snow, I realise when I go to, the, like, Australia, I'm shit because I get so psyched out that it's so – so icy yeah because it's so much scarier like i'm like i'm so gutsy in canada because i'm like yeah i'll try this like i'll try huge rails in canada because i'm like if you fall it's like whatever 
Even if you fall like right on your shoulders, I'm like, I'll roll away. But mm. in Australia, I'm like, that's going to shatter something if I fall yeah. there. I remember one of my very first times skiing. I remember just coming, like it was all, a bit of snow and then I went down this little dip and then I looked and I just remember seeing ice. And I remember being like, fuck, I don't know how to slow myself down. And I just remember just skidding and the sound of it. I was like, this is the sound, like, this is horrifying. There's no snow here. I'm, I was just thinking like all my technique went out of the window. I was just like, what is my human nature reaction of just staying balanced? I did that. Yeah. Also to clarify, when I said I was like, I'm, I'm good. Uh, if you think of like the big rails at the rail park, I can't do tricks on those. I can ride those. Okay. If that makes sense. Like little little boxes, you know, the boxes that are like kind of like small to the ground. I can like, but it's like, it's very, I'm like, okay at those. But like, just like the big boxes and stuff, I can ride them. I can survive them. Who are you trying to, who, who are you I trying to know, impress maybe, right I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. So, okay. Someone's going to be like. Well, can't you do the big rails? Huge, you, huge fan right. of the pod, Sean White. If I, you know? if, if I put a box in front of you. <laughs> do you know what my unrealistic trait is? Have you ever seen, <sighs> hey, please. You know those videos, I don't know if you see them on TikTok or like the Red Bull things where it's like uh, people make like hang glider things and they run off that. Yep. My toxic trait is I'm like, I could win this. You guys, you guys are idiots. But, but the people who win, it's always a bit of like a, uh, uh, you, you like got they it. just are on a hang glider. They're I'm like, on a okay, well, glider, these guys were on like they, a burger. They, Obviously, they, they like, fell. And they put feathers on a hang glider and they're like, oh, yeah, we're a fucking swan. It's like, no, you're not. You're on a exactly. hang glider. Exactly. I'm like, what about yeah, the, the cunts who are in a Fred Flintstone car and there's four of them and their feet hang out from the bottom of it. <laughs> and they're like, that was shit. It's like, was, yeah, man. It barely flew. It's like, yeah, it, every time you <laughs> watch course. the winner. I'm, never imp- I'm more impressed by a really cool looking car making it five meters, then making like, it longer than you thought it then, would. Then like a car who gets to like a kilometer. Yeah, which would never happen. But I mean, I wouldn't even be impressed. No, not at all. I like it when it's it look it's like it looks like an Amelia Earhart looking ass plane. Oh, the the prop planes. Yeah, the prop planes. But it's like it's not a real prop plane. It's like made out of cardboard. But they go surprisingly it's far. A, it's not a real plane. Fun fact. They're not actually. It's not a real prop plane. When they do the Red Bull Wings for life competition, it's not a real plane. Well, thank you. It's very simple. So yes and no. <sighs> Should we address this little? Yes. This, this came across my desk this week. Well, came across your desk. It came across my. Came across desk. your desk. Uh, do you want to explain what this is? Yes. And I'll read it. Um and. If you guys are listening to the episode, um, head to the YouTube because I'm wearing the hat. I was wearing a Sailor Moon. It would have been so many episodes ago. <laughs> yeah, but fuck him. But uh, I'm finally wearing it. Um, we received we received a little card. We received a, um, a message. From Emma and Alex. Shout out Emma and Alex and Michelle Bridges. And <laughs> <laughs> they know, do they know who that is? Um, uh, I'll, I'll read it out. It says, Lockie, in cheers for the laughs. Hope you do some more unhinged voicemail eps while Lockie is away. And they sent because I was wearing uh, the Sailor Moon hat that Lockie is currently wearing. Yes. Which I got from the Easter show. Okay. <laughs> I fucking love the Easter show. Um, but Emma was like, oh, I have a Sailor Moon hat that I never, ever wear, but it's like it's like a vintage Sailor Moon hat. It's very cool. It's very cool. And, and I was it's like, nice material. Yeah, I was like, please send it. Um and she was kind enough to send it to me, which is really, really awesome. So we're wearing our matching Sailor Moon hat. So shout out to Emma and Alex. Thank you so much for sending us yeah, that. Yeah, thank you so much. It That was one of the Guys, moments where I'm like, oh, know, people listen to this. Yeah, if anyone wants to know where Eden lives, just message Emma and Alex because uh, Eden gave them the address. <gasps> can I tell you something? 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 There are ads on the podcast. We got ads on the These podcast. These people would have known that for about eight There's, episodes now. Did we get approved? Yes, we did. Yeah. Because I filled it out properly. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, there's ads on the podcast now. Wow. Okay. So we just got to fill out I that wonder, thing. So I wonder. I'd like to say this. collect our dollars. I'm going to blindly say this. Every ad you've heard so far is an absolute reflection of my core values. <laughs> Whatever you've heard. I use that daily. Do you know what was funny? They were like, look, I'll, uh, they were like, we'll send, like sign you up for the um, general list and like uh, they were like, here's the usual ones people veto. So obviously you won't have those, which is like um, gambling, uh, firearms. Harvey, <laughs> Harvey Norman. <laughs> but that was like <gasps> firearms is so funny. Like Dude, imagine honestly, nobody asked a podcast and they're like, get your guns ready. <laughs> but there's the, it wouldn't be able to tell if it's a segment or not. So I think, I think you should absolutely <laughs> do it. Like, <laughs> that it could just be us being like, big old firearms, firearms express, please come. Sixty percent off for six in the chamber list, Fourth of July. It's um. Be like, Lockie's getting really good at the voice. In the town I I went to school for, 
at went to school for oh shush Woo. um I, um went to school at for a while in Canada. It's funny, like Canadian. I didn't ta- know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there, right there, and you're hurting doing it. Right there, saw a maple leaf and a moose over there. Sorry, saw one over there. Pretty cool. Why don't you put your maple leaf on my on my Horton's doing it right there? Yeah, well. Ooh, Canada. Well, how long will this go for? It's done. Good. So there. That's um, what they all I say. I think it's like their equivalent. It's almost. It's not like it's a hardware store kind of. It's like if Bunnings and like Big W or something had like a weird little baby. It's it's called Canadian Tire. You can get like Canadian Tire. Canadian Tire. Tire. So it's like outdoor. It's like BCF. 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 Fun. Not really Bunnings because it's not like building stuff, but yeah. it's like outdoors. 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 Yeah. Anaconda. He, Anaconda, there's like, yeah, there's like thermals, Anaconda, but. Uh, Just keep naming all the products. <laughs> but why I'm saying this is it's like um, camping wear and like clothes and, um, you know, stuff for around the house and rifles. Yeah. And pool toys and rifles. Yeah, that's most of North America. I know, but I know, but I'm saying like it was, it's the one that I. I noticed most because it wasn't like, oh, yeah, I'm in America. I'm running around. Isn't mm. this crazy? We're in the South, blah, 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 blah. It was like, oh, this is a place I go to school in. And, like, my friends were like, you know, I'd follow them on Instagram and a few of them were, like, posing with mountain Guns. lion heads. Oh, with mountain lion heads. Yeah. I mean, if I shot a mountain lion, I'd be fucking posting that shit. That's a crazy – to even see one, let alone take that fucker down. It's crazy. I stood there from about 200 yards out. And my, and my scope sat on him and I just uh, out there about 1,400 yards, pull the trigger. Blame me. I don't know if I could do it. I'd you know, probably the, cry for 700 years. I ran over a lorikeet the other day and I didn't feel great about it. <gasps> I've never hit an animal. You know what's crazy? I, this is how, I realized this was not my – it's it's not my fault because the lorikeets haven't learned because I ran over one lor- – no, no, listen, 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 listen. This is like when I was talking about women's sports and you were like, oh, this isn't going anywhere, and then it went exactly where you want it to go. These lorikeets – this you know what? This is going to make the lorikeet population stronger because there's one tree down the road from me, and I've realised this now. I These two lorikeets were in the middle of the road eating something. I slowed down. I was at like 30 k's, and I went, okay, cool. And then I looked back and I was like, oh, fuck, I ran over one of them. I was so upset. I felt awful all day. And then I remember driving back home at the end of the day and where I ran over that lorikeet, there were about five more dead ones. Someone had moved them off the road into the gutter. So all that tells me is that tree is full of dumb lorikeets who aren't learning from the mistakes of the other ones. So every other lorikeet, you don't see gutters full of lorikeets anywhere else. So everyone's just, all these lorikeets are the dumb ones. Once they're out of the gene pool, you know what happens? with that? If we, if we get rid of that generation, which maybe there's five of them in that tree, we get rid of them. There's no more dumb lorikeets, no more get run over. They made the ultimate sacrifice to make sure lorikeets are going to be fine. So I helped them. If anything, I'm a martyr. Maybe the they didn't want to go out without that one. Maybe that, maybe, maybe that one saw, that's my best friend. You think, you think I caused a group suicide of the, of the lorikeets? I think they had a pact. This is what, so they were cult leaders and they were all going up to, they were going to go to an alien settlement. This is what I always say. You know how people go like, well, if your friends were going to jump off a bridge, would you do it too? Hey, yeah, if all of my friends jumped off a bridge. Like for I reckon, fun? Well, I don't know. But, but you're trying to off yourself. Well, like if all That's your friends crazy. jumped off a bridge, would you? I would feel like it. I'd feel left I would, out. I would contemplate doing it if all of my friends went, we're all going to. Yeah, if you I'm going to jump off the gap. I if, would go, yeah, maybe I, w- I would want to. I would think about it. I think another example, if you found out all of your friends we're in a cult without you. And then they did one of those like we take a cyanide pill and we're going to go up to heaven and Jesus is awaiting us and they did it without you, I'd be a little bothered. I'd be like, you guys didn't want me in your cult? Literally. All right. I I mean, I don't I'd love like, I don't oh. love the dressing gowns we all would have had to wear, but I would have done it. Yeah, it's really rude. Imagine they were like, oh, we didn't include you because you just talk a lot and you probably tell other people and we don't want it to be a big thing. Oh, my God, treating cult like a, a cult, like it's a, an afters that you don't want everyone at the party to know about. <laughs> you're like. So you guys, like, like, are, you guys are you guys the children of Methuselah? No, no, we don't really. I'm not sure. We're not sure if we're doing that this year. Um. Yeah, we might go home or we yeah. might. Are you guys doing like a blood oath in the forest? I'm tired. Pretty 
I'm pretty. Yeah, I got stuff yeah. to do tomorrow. Oh, but I what, drove here. I'm not. No, we're not doing a sacrifice. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. No, the the, the go- I think those guys are. Yeah, I think if you ask them, but we're probably gonna just head to Macca's. Yeah. No, the goat's not for anything. We we just have that. Yeah. Mm. But um. Anyway, I'm just gonna draw. I'm gonna start drawing a pentagram here, but just. Ignore that's for nothing. I'm just doing that because it's like fun. Yeah, guys, should we wrap this up? Um, I'm really. I'm so sorry. I'm so tired. Do you guys though. need? Do you guys need me to order anyone an Uber home? No, it's not because of the cult thing. No, we're not doing that tonight. No, we're just gonna hang back here for a minute. Just make sure everyone's good. You just start hearing <sighs> chanting in the woods. This seems like a good place to end this episode. Um. I mean, can I can I tell a fucked up story and we might cut it out? And if it, if it's if you don't think it's good, we you no, can, you never say like I don't know if this is going to make it in. So I'm excited. Well, this is, so either the episode will have ended just then, or if you're still hearing my voice, then we have decided this is okay. To, what? It's, it's not bad. I don't think it's bad because come on, go on with it. Okay. So when I was like 16, there I I was like seeing a girl, also 16. It was the most 16 year old relationship you've you've ever. Yes. Seen. It's just like. Us go over to the house. I nervously talk to her parents and then kissy kissy up in her room and then that was that was like and then see each other at parties. That was it. Yeah. And um, I remember I got to the point where I was like, okay, I think it's over now. And being sixteen, I was like, I'll Snapchat her just to let her know that it's over. Oh. And this is what I'm literally using, like taking a photo of myself on Snapchat, being like, I think this is it. Um, and you know, she's replying back like, what do you? And I'm basically saying that I'm breaking up with her. Mm-hmm. And as many, I think. Most people have experienced in their life the the horrible response that you might get from someone when you say you're breaking up with them where they might threaten to hurt themselves, which is what <laughs> happened here. <laughs> yep. Oh, and you better she, keep this in. She said, and in order to freak me out, she was like, I'm going to cut myself basically. Mm-hmm. And she sent a photo of her arm before anything had happened and a – Set of nail clippers. <laughs> yeah, text me in five hours when you're done. <laughs> and I remember getting it. And I was like horrified because I was, I was 16. I've never had to do yeah. this. And I was like, and then I saw that and I was like, I didn't want to text back and be like, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. But, you know. <laughs> There's no other appliance in your house. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't, I, because I, what, I think she listened. <laughs> she, that's how much she didn't want to keep me around. She's like, she rolled over and was like, oh, what can I get him to stay? Uh, yeah, no, I got nail clip. That'll do. And I was just like, I was like, I remember having to go down to my parents and being like, You told her parents? Was, no, no, I go down to my parents. I'm like, Can you, are you able to cut yourself with like nail clippers? And they're like, Oh, yeah, like your fingertips and stuff. I'm like, No, 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 no. Worse. <laughs> uh, but shout out to that girl. Um, God. Freaking 16 year old me out. And it was a, it was a, that's pretty funny. A unique way of doing that. Uh, don't do that if someone's breaking up with you. Just <laughs> take it graciously and <laughs> don't send them a photo of nail clippers and going to be like, I'm going to do it. Do you she know, didn't. We got to normalise. Actually, no. I'm, I'm keeping this and I'm starting the next episode on a talking point because it's a real good one. <laughs> I'm right. starting it on an edgy one. All right. Well, I guess that, I guess that bit's staying in. If that girl's listening today, All right. I hold no ill feelings towards you, but that was. But stay safe, girly. That was fucked up. All right. Love you guys. Adios. Love you. Adios. Shout out Michelle Bridges.